In the run-up to the end of his first term as U.S. president, Barack Obama, the first black president of the U.S., pledged to bring to an end the long-protracted hunt for Uganda's most elusive man, the Los Angeles Army Chief Joseph Kony. Being the world's superpower, this sent many Ugandans into a frenzy world over, knowing that the year 2012 would not end without Kony being captured, though indeed it ended. We put this question to the American ambassador to Uganda, and this was the explanation of why, even with help from the 100 USA commandos are flown to the Central African Republic, Kony still remains elusive. Certainly the hunt for Joseph Kony, Joseph Kony is part, getting Joseph Kony, bringing him and his senior cadre to justice. Yes, that is something that we all aspire to, but that's not what this is, that's not the only thing that is important here. Equally important has been the effort to bring greater protections to the civilian populations who are at risk. The measure isn't always, did you get Joseph Kony today? But have we made progress towards that goal? Are we making a difference? And I think that we are. Whether Joseph Kony, whether he is found tomorrow, two months from now, six months from now, as I say, we're committed to doing that, but that's not the only measure of the engagement and of success. Still on matters of security, with cross-border conflicts affecting Uganda, Ambassador Scott says what the people of Uganda should know is that America will solve all their security troubles, taking an example of the crisis in Congo, which he says requires the regional leaders to take a joint position over the matter. And I'm not going to try to dodge it completely, but I'm always struck. People say, what is the American government going to do to solve this problem? I will say honestly, the American government cannot solve every problem in the world. But at the same time, I know that we are, a, we are a leader and people do look to us. And we know this and we do not abdicate our, our role or our leadership responsibility. But we know that we can't, again, come and impose a solution on the Congo. We can't tell Rwanda and the DRC and Uganda and Tanzania and all the rest, this is what the Great Lakes region should do and now just do it and everything will be fine because we won't know the right answer in any event. Aware from security onto the foreign aid donations to Uganda, Ambassador Scott reveals that American government is to give Uganda 700 million U.S. dollars in donation in the next four years, which money will majorly be in the health sector, with priority on the fight against malaria, HIV AIDS, among others. These despite reports that several other countries are stopping aid to the country. We are concerned and deeply troubled when we see aid misused and when we see corruption. But we did not suspend our aid, not because we applauded what was happening, but because we were confident that the programs that we had and the partners we were working with within the government and the NGO community we, we track our aid very carefully. So we remain committed to the aid partnership and the development partnership, but we also remain absolutely insistent on the importance of accountability, of transparency, and of doing this right. On whether America thinks it's better to deal with NGOs operating on ground in the areas they want to take their aid, both direct and indirect, as most of the beneficiaries have been asking several aid donors, Ambassador Scott says that their projects will go through government and that it will have to be the central government to appropriate its aid to local organizations. All right. Thank you. Moses, it's a pleasure. Thank you pleasure. again for airing the inauguration. A big one.